Nurses, what happens when you become the patient? What do you experience on the other side of the stethoscope? And what happens when you notice that nurses are cutting corners and not delivering the care that you deserve or that other patients deserve? Let's talk about the nurse becoming the patient right here on episode 117 of The Nurse Keith Show. What's up, everyone? Hello, and welcome to The Nurse Keith Show. Thanks for being part of The Nurse Keith Nation. Whether you're a longtime listener or this is the first time you're tuning in, I welcome you to the episode. This podcast is all about you and your nursing career, and I'm here to share education, inspiration, and ideas that can get you moving in a positive and inspired direction. I'm a member of the Pulse Media Network of Podcasters over at PulseMediaNetwork.com. Check out RNFM Radio, The Innovative Nurse Show, The Gluten-Free RN, Elizabeth Scala's Your Next Shift podcast, and other shows that are coming down the pike. You can find The Nurse Keith Show on iTunes. You can find me all over social media. You can even leave me a voicemail right on my website at nursekeith.com if you'd like your questions to be played and answered on the air. How cool is that? And if you want to find the show notes for this episode, just head over to nursekeith.com forward slash episode 117. That is nursekeith.com forward slash episode 117. Anyway, I am thrilled that you're here, and let's dig into today's topic. Let's hop right over into the studio. Come on with me. So folks, a few weeks ago, in early July 2017, I was minding my own business at the gym when I suffered a freak accident that some of you may have heard about on social media, Facebook, Instagram, it resulted in some pretty major injuries to my lower left leg. There's a blog post on Digital Doorway telling some of the story, and you can check that out. The blog post is linked in the show notes. And my desire for that blog post and also for this episode of The Nurse Keith Show is to remind us nurses, that we need to be vigilant in terms of how we advocate for our patients, but also how we advocate for ourselves when we're on the other end of the stethoscope. So I'm not going to go into the long and gory details of what happened to me other than to say that due to some equipment failure at a gym that was no fault of mine, I suffered some pretty major injuries that are going to take quite some time to resolve. And While I was in the hospital, I really learned a lot about being a patient. I've been a patient before, but I haven't been hospitalized many times, just several other times in my life. So, and I've never been hospitalized on an emergency basis for something so major. So it really gave me pause in terms of being a nurse in the hospital, receiving care, observing nurses at work from the vulnerable place of being in bed, not at the bedside, and assessing the care that I was receiving along the way. Now, there was lots of pain and suffering while I was in the hospital. There's a fair amount right now um, out here in civilian life, and I am dealing with the consequences of the accident that occurred. But what I noticed in the hospital was that for whatever reason that I did not really have a chance to fully assess because one, I was obtunded on narcotics and could only do so much research while I was laying in bed, but there were a lot of things that fell through the cracks in the course of my care, like not being given an incentive spirometer for 48 hours after I got out of surgery or not having a respiratory and lung assessment done for 48 hours, having no one check my pedal pulses to make sure that the circulation to my operative leg was good. So there were a lot of things going on there. There were things that I needed to really advocate for. There were things I needed to vehemently ask for. I had to be quite assertive. And this tells me that there is something going on in the facility where I was being treated. So 
what are those things that are going on that can keep nurses from doing what they're supposed to do? And when we ourselves are the patient, how do we advocate for ourselves, first of all, to make sure we get what we're supposed to be getting? And what do we do with that inner conflict that we feel knowing that there are other patients in that hospital or any other hospital, for that matter, who are getting the short end of the stick when it comes to their care? Now, we know that nurses are the backbone, the heart, the very lifeblood of healthcare. Now, why did the nurses on the unit where I was consistently fail to listen to my lungs when they did their assessment? Why did they not assess my bowel status even though I was on a fair amount of narcotics? Why did they not check the pulses in my operative leg? You know, why did these things happen? Why did the surgeon try to force me home on a Sunday at five o'clock when I explained I wasn't feeling well, or even though I explained I wasn't feeling well and that I had no durable medical equipment and unsafe environment to go home to and I needed another day to make arrangements, he didn't seem to care. Anyway, I forced his hand and I was able to stay another night and be able to get things together a little bit more rather than being pushed out the door at sunset on Sunday. So there's a lot to learn from these types of experiences. This is really a teaching moment and a learning moment. And I want to ask you, the listener, have you ever been a patient? I'm sure you, you know, I'm sure you go to the doctor or the nurse practitioner and you receive care, primary care. Some of you out there might have chronic conditions or chronic illnesses that need ongoing attention. You might be someone who has had cancer or very serious illness and you've needed to receive, let's see, chemo or radiation or surgery or something like that, some really major intervention. So many of you listening have probably been on the other end of the stethoscope. Some of you may be chronically ill and you're on the other end of the stethoscope frequently. So what I also want to ask you then is what do you do when you yourself are not receiving the care that you feel you should be receiving? What do you do with that information? Do you speak to the nurse who's actually treating you? Do you go above his or her head to the unit manager? Do you write the CNO of the organization to let them know? Do you go on social media and talk about it? And if you have family or friends going to that same facility, what do you tell them? How do you help them to advocate for themselves to make sure that they're getting the care that they deserve? So these are all very salient questions to ask ourselves as clinicians. They're also salient questions to ask ourselves as patients. And more or less, most of us are going to end up being a patient at some point in our lives. And if we are not ending up being patients, it could be our spouse, our child, our parent, our grandparent, our best friend, our fiance, our aunt or uncle. And we know as nurses, and this happens to me all the time, family members reach out, friends and neighbors reach out, members of your faith community reach out because they know that nurses know the dirt. They know what is supposed to happen. They know what due diligence means and people trust us. So they come to us for advice. They come to us for support. So what do we take away from experiences that are less than stellar? We're educated healthcare professionals like myself. I've been a nurse for 21 years and I still received care that wasn't quite up to snuff while I was in the hospital. And unfortunately, no, well, fortunately, nothing really horrible happened, but there were some consequences to the care that I did and didn't receive. And that is something to walk away with and really think about. What do I want to tell other people who are going to that hospital? What do I want to tell them to look for or not look for or ignore or not ignore or advocate for? What do they need to ask for? What are the things they should know? Because you don't know what you don't know. So a non-healthcare professional who's in a vulnerable position in a hospital bed may not know what to ask for or may not realize what isn't being done. 
So when there are omissions of care, this can be seen as a benign neglect. It can also be seen as a nurse or healthcare professional not fulfilling the duties, not fulfilling the orders related to the condition or the the complications or the disease that they're treating. So we all know that nosocomial infections happen in hospitals. We know that mistakes are made. We know that there are drug errors and many of us have made errors and we've paid the price. And that's part of the price we pay of being a healthcare professional. However, if you're working in an environment like a client I spoke with the other day, where you feel like all you can do is the basics, where you're expected to be task-based, you're expected to get enormous amounts of work done in very short amounts of time, your productivity is measured in ways that make it feel like you can't provide the care that you want to provide, you miss things, you omit pieces of assessments because you're in such a hurry, you make mistakes because you feel like there's just too much to do. If you're working in an environment where you can't practice the way you want to practice, where you're actually being forced to make decisions that are very uncomfortable and possibly morally ooh, edgy to make, then you might want to consider getting out of there. If you work in a hospital where you don't feel valued, where you feel like Yes, that patient who just had surgery, I don't have time to check his pedal pulses. I, I'm going to skip the respiratory assessment because he looks okay. You know, this kind of stuff can come back to bite you in the butt. And you want to make sure you're practicing in a way, one, that protects your license, and two, makes you feel good about who you are and what you're doing and the care you're providing. You don't want to be put in a position or put yourself in a position where you're providing substandard care because you're in a work environment that won't allow you to provide the standard of care that you feel is appropriate for the patients you're treating. So there are overly large patient loads, you know, nurse-patient ratios. There are extra long shifts, mandatory overtime, there's cutting corners because there's just not enough time. But you know, there are certain things that you know, as well as I do, that you have to make time for. Part of it is protecting your license. And the other part is protecting the patient and doing your due diligence in providing the care that you know you need to provide. Those nurses on the unit where I was Did they even realize they didn't listen to my lungs? Did they realize they hadn't checked the pulses in my foot? Did they know that the narcotics were really affecting me and I was just too out of it to ask for a stool softener? Thus, two days in, I realized I was uncomfortable and had to demand a stool softener because no one offered and no one assessed my belly. So do they realize that those emissions of care occurred? And what I want to ask you is, are you working in an environment where you're omitting aspects of care and maybe you're not even conscious of it? You're just in such a hurry. Now, think about the last time you were on the other end of the stethoscope. Think about how it felt to be listened to or not listened to to be assessed appropriately or not assessed appropriately, to be treated like a number or not treated like a number, to be seen as a human being or not, to be seen as simply a diagnosis that needed treatment and not a person behind the diagnosis. So think about your experiences as a patient. And if you're young and healthy or older and healthy and you really haven't had any major health issues, look at your family members, your friends, your your children, your parents, your grandparents. What experiences have they had? Take a walk in their moccasins, walk in their shoes, and see what is it like on that other end of the stethoscope. This is a really hot issue for me because I was recently very much on the other end of the stethoscope and the scalpel, and I will be receiving various types of care for quite some time to come based on this incident that occurred. So the question I have for you is, are you providing the type of care that you feel you should be? Are you working in a place where 
Maybe you're being prevented from providing the type of care that you should. And I want you to consider how are you putting your license at risk at any time in the course of your practice? And if you are putting your license at risk, something needs to change. And if you can put yourself in the shoes of the patient in that bed, if you can put yourself in the moccasins of that patient coming to see you in the clinic and asking for your support and your empathy and your compassion and your assessment of their situation, if you can successfully do that and revisit why you're a nurse, what you do as a nurse, what your mission is as a professional, and how you want to practice. And if you're in a place, again, where you cannot practice in the way that you think you should be, and if you feel, especially if you feel your license is at risk on a regular basis, something needs to change and you and I need to talk. Hey folks, I want to take a quick pause for the cause here to remind you that I'm going to be speaking once again at the National Nurses and Business Association Annual Conference in St. Pete's Beach, Florida, September 8th, 9th, and 10th, 2017. If you have even a tiny interest in starting a business or a side hustle as a nurse entrepreneur, the NNBA conference is the premier place to be in order to light the fire of nurse entrepreneurship in your heart and mind. And you know what? Kevin Ross and Elizabeth Scala from RNFM Radio and the Pulse Media Network are going to be joining me in presenting a pre-conference workshop on the power of podcasting. That's right. If you would like to launch a podcast, whether it's related to nursing and healthcare or something entirely different, you can learn from us. We're the experts and you can come away with everything you need to know to launch your own podcast. There are also going to be pre-conference workshops on legal nurse consulting, on the business of blogging, so many great ways to learn, so many awesome people to meet. This is my favorite conference of the year. So head over to the show notes for this episode and click on the links for more information. I will see you in Florida at the National Nurses and Business Association Conference, September 8th through 10th, 2017. So folks, we need to advocate for ourselves as nurses. We need to advocate for ourselves as patients because many of us receive medical care on a regular basis, myself included. And then we need to advocate for our patients. We need to advocate for them and we need to advocate for our profession because everything we do does have reverberations. You know, that whole thing about when a butterfly flutters its wings in China, it can cause winds to change in South America. It's the same thing in the healthcare profession. When a nurse does a really good job, we don't know what reverberations that good job is going to have, but it will reverberate and ripple out in myriad ways. And when a nurse or a surgeon or a doctor or a physical therapist or a social worker or a case manager falls down on the job, when they don't do what they're supposed to do, when they don't do their due diligence, when things aren't quite kosher, there's reverberations there too. So we need to instill trust in our patients, trust that we do our due diligence and we do our jobs in the way that we know really speaks to who we are and what our mission is as nurses and healthcare professionals. So folks, These lessons are really crucial, and whether you've been a patient or not, someday you probably will be, and we need to make sure that we understand what the experience is on either end of that stethoscope, and I encourage you to make sure that you are taking into account all of these factors so that you can be the nurse you want to be, you can deliver the kind of care you would like to deliver, And that when you or one of your loved ones are on the receiving end of care, that you receive the best possible care and advocate for yourselves in the most assertive, prudent, forward-thinking way that you possibly can. So folks, there you have it. That is episode 117, just reflecting on my recent experience under the knife 
and receiving nursing care in an acute situation. I hope this has given you some food for thought, that it's left you feeling empowered, that it's left you feeling thoughtful, really looking deeply at your career, looking at your experience as a patient on the other side of the stethoscope. And I want you to take some inspired action in the interest of your career, in the interest of being the nurse who you truly want to be. And did you know that you could become a patron of the Nurse Keith Show? That's right. Quite a few listeners have become patrons at patreon.com forward slash Nurse Keith. That's P A T R E O N dot com forward slash Nurse Keith. You can pledge as little as $2 a month to support the show. It means the world to me. And if you go over to patreon.com forward slash Nurse Keith, you will see the gifts and special things I will send you in the mail if you pledge at least $5 a month for a period of time. So if you want to support me, $5 a month, that's $1.25 per episode. It's a great way to support the show and the growth of the show and the production and everything that goes into delivering this content to you. The Nurse Keith Show is edited and produced by the amazing Tim Hollowell of thepodcastingguy.com. Check him out. Social media and promotion are handled by the equally wonderful Mark Cappy Spiesen. As usual, my hat's off to Tim and Mark for really making things buzz and just sail along here at the Nurse Keith Show. My thanks also to Kevin Ross, the executive producer over at the Pulse Media Network, Marie Rittenhouse, and Gloria Attar over at Pulse Media. They are really helping on the social media side. So thank you to the folks at Pulse Media for supporting the Nurse Keith Show. Sign up for my newsletter at nursekeith.com. You'll get a 12-page LinkedIn profile makeover guide in exchange for that. Leave me a voicemail at nursekeith.com. And I want you to stay positive, care for yourself and others, take inspired action in the interest of your career, and tune in again as we continue to explore how to make your nursing career more satisfying, more fun, more inspired than you ever imagined possible. Be well, folks. Dig deep. Keep in touch. And adios till next time from beautiful Santa Fe, New Mexico. 